Studying architecture requires a lot of time and a lot of effort and can sometimes completely take over your life. Time management gives you the opportunity to quite literally manage your time so that you can live your life as well as study. In this video, I'm going to give you five tips on how you can perfect your time management as an architecture student. Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to a brand new video. Just before we dive into the video, can I please ask you a massive favor? Can you smash the thumbs up button and subscribe? That'd be much, much appreciated. I'm currently a second year Masters of Architecture student and over the five years that I've been studying architecture, I've built a time management process that works for me. And although time management is fairly subjective depending on your priorities and your goals, I'm going to give you some useful principles of time management that's going to help you guys while studying architecture. But just before we dive into the video, this video is sponsored by UPDF. UPDF is a universal, efficient PDF editor. UPDF is a productivity tool to view, edit, and annotate your PDF files. UPDF has a really beautiful and clear interface that makes for an efficient addition to your workflow. It is packed with useful features such as encrypting, signing, organizing, and sharing PDFs. You can also add and modify images as well as read and structure your PDF documents. It is available for Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android users so it can be used across all platforms. Make sure you check out their website where they provide a series of tutorials to help you get started. Your license will give you access to use the application across all devices and and you can get yourself a 42% discount if you use the link down below in the description. So thank you UPDF for sponsoring today's video. Time management for me isn't personally about being as productive as possible and being productive all of the time. It's about managing my time as best as possible so that I can spend time with my family and friends, enjoy myself, live my life a bit, but also make sure that I'm working towards my deadlines at the best quality possible. Tip number one, the, well, probably the most important thing is to understand that time is in our control and I know people have probably told you that a lot and I'm probably just repeating many things that people have said before but it's true we are all in control of our own time and I think that's even more important to understand as a student because typically students are completely in control of their own time apart from the hour lecture that you have a week or the studio day or the tutorial that you might have organized. Apart from that, you are completely in control of your own time. And I think that's what makes it so kind of overwhelming for architecture students because we have so many modules and so many submissions going on at the same time. It can be very overwhelming to understand how the hell do I get all of this done and how on earth do I control my own time? And often when you tell yourself that you don't have time to do something, often it's because you're not making it a priority. And that's really important to understand. Tip number two is use a to-do list or to-do table. When studying architecture, it can get very overwhelming with the sheer amount of work and, and things that need to be submitted at certain times. So typically when a year starts or when a semester starts for me, I will look at the modules, the module deadlines, and when everything is basically required to be submitted. And therefore I can completely structure my entire semester or my entire year pretty much as an architecture student based around the module submissions and deadlines. Um, and therefore it gives me a good understanding of how to schedule my time. And I kind of work backwards and I do weekly and daily to-do lists. So for example, at the start of this year, I timetabled semester one into an Excel spreadsheet. And very simply, I just put in when the deadlines were, when I had presentations, when I had crits, etc., or when I had time off. And therefore I could write in and pretty much understand how many weeks I've got to do a submission and maybe when a submission crosses over or when I've got a dissertation and a studio hand in within the same kind of two weeks. So what I mean by weekly scheduling is so for example, if you've got a crit in three weeks time and you know you need a plan, you need an elevation, you need some visuals, you need some research, you need a digital presentation, you need to print out an A2 panel and you need a model, for example, in three weeks. So therefore you could break those three weeks up into week one, having to complete conceptual sketches, research, diagramming, etc. Week two, focusing on producing the drawings, making sure the drawings are well on their way. And week three, making sure you're finalizing those drawings and maybe constructing a model, for example. Therefore, for those three weeks, you're giving yourself pretty much a singular task for each week and exactly the kind of broad goals for that week. 
to make sure that you're working towards that crit. And then by breaking those weeks down into individual days, for example, you could say, right, Monday, I want to solely focus on research. Tuesday, I want to solely focus on doing sketching. Wednesday, I want to solely focus on doing more sketching. Thursday, I want to focus on making sure I'm turning those sketches into diagrams, etc. And you could keep doing this for the rest of the week to make sure that by the end of the week, you've reached all of your goals and then you're ready for the next week to then reach the next set of goals all the way leading up to the crit. In this way, when it comes to your daily and weekly scheduling, you're keeping things fairly simple, which means that you're not overwhelming yourself with a massive to-do list and you're kind of keeping your priorities and your daily and weekly highlights to a minimum. Now, I would definitely recommend doing a to-do list by hand. So writing it out first thing in the morning on each day, and then you could get that kind of satisfaction of being able to tick off the to-do list or cross it out. And you kind of get that satisfaction of knowing that you've got that thing done and you can move on to the next task. Tip numero three is time blocking. So time blocking is something that I do often if say for example, each day I give myself three or four tasks to do that might take me a little bit longer than say half an hour. So for example, if I want to film a video, I will book in say on a Monday, I want to film a video between two and three o'clock on Monday. And therefore I give myself an hour to film the video and then it's already planned in and it gives me a bit of leeway, basically making sure that I've got enough time to film. I would then maybe say that between four and six o'clock, I want to start doing a drawing, which means that within those two hours, I can give my full focus on the drawing and I've planned it in and I've got nothing else scheduled around that around that time, which means that I can fully focus on that drawing. So time blocking basically gives you the opportunity to solely focus on a task between a certain set of hours without giving yourself too much pressure to get it done instantly. You're giving yourself maybe a three, four hour period to get a task done. And this also removes the time that you might take jumping between tasks. So for example, if you've got something that might only take 10 minutes or 20 minutes, you could do that at a different time block. And so therefore you're not jumping between two different things that might be contradicting one another. So for example, if I'm currently writing my dissertation, I will plan in say between, I don't know, one o'clock and six o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon, I'm going to solely focus on my dissertation. Therefore, I don't have any other tasks in that day between those times that are going to distract me from writing the dissertation. Tip number four is going to be artificial deadlines. And this is something that I do all of the time. I'm constantly saying, right, between this time and this time, I need to get this done. By the end of the week, I need to get this done. And I'm giving myself as if they're kind of physical deadlines that I need to get this thing handed in. This is very similar to how you would kind of structure your time blocking or how you would also set your priorities for your daily tasks or your weekly tasks. Um, because you're pretty much just giving yourself a time and a deadline as if it was going to be a submission for a portfolio submission, for example. So say today I need to get this video done and I want to get it edited um, and ready to upload maybe for tomorrow. Therefore, I'm giving myself an artificial deadline for this evening to get this video filmed and edited, even though it doesn't actually have to be filmed and edited by that point. But because I'm giving myself that accountability and make sure that I want to get that done, then therefore I kind of push myself and apply that pressure slightly to make sure that that task gets done. And I think it's really important to make sure that you're being realistic with yourself in getting these deadlines completed and making sure that you're not putting yourself under too much pressure to get something done in a really short space of time, which might not be possible because it's very often that we give ourselves tasks and we think it's gonna be a lot quicker and often it will take a lot longer and then you start kind of kicking yourself and you fall out of the routine and out of the schedule that you've set yourself at the start of the week. So therefore it's really important to be realistic from the off. And finally, tip number five is going to be protective time. So this is simply about making sure that you've got time for yourself, for your friends, for your family, and making sure that you're sticking to that on a daily or a weekly basis. So for example, if I wanted to say that my mornings are my protective time, so between or maybe before 11 a.m. every single day is going to be my protective time to be able to go to the gym, go for a run, go for a walk, uh, maybe go see some friends and go for a coffee in the morning or just have some time to myself where I'm relaxing and just spending time alone, focusing on myself, focusing on my own personal well-being before I tackle the day. And this is also important if, for example, you agree that you're going out on a Friday night with your friends or you're going to the pub 
That is then your protected time for that Friday and you will work and schedule around that time. And those are my five tips for time management. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, time management is very subjective and everyone will kind of operate differently. Um, but for me, this works. Um, it's kind of like this loose, but fairly structured and scheduled time management. Um, and I think this really works for me and it's really important for me to make sure that I spend time to myself, but also make sure that I'm working towards deadlines and make sure that I'm getting the work done to a high level or the highest level that I kind of want or kind of aspire to. And so I think you guys could take some really key things away from this in making sure that you're managing your time as best as possible. So thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's slightly different. To so thank you so much for watching today's video, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please smash the subscribe button. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you next time. Peace.